Hey guys, how you doing? It's Keptech here bringing another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Sunday. And today I want to go over my experience, like a day in the life of IT, uh, senior desktop support. So obviously if you're new to my channel, you know what to do, right? Comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. So today I want to go over what I do in my job, what I do in my current job, and I obviously what skills you need to know if you want to get a job like what I'm doing right now. So let's start from, let's start from the beginning. So I, I work for a financial services. I work for a fintech company. And um, for this job requirement, you need to know about um, multi-factor authentication. So we use Okta in my environment. That's number one. Number two is you need to understand how VMware works. So you, you have to understand how to upgrade, how to deallocate memory, how to make changes on the fly when you're when you're trying to update someone's memory, RAM, hard drive space, or how to allocate a VM to someone those things are very important, extremely important. So VMware is one and VMware had to make a lot of money if you know how to use VMware. And it gets complicated when it comes to like vMotion and how things get allocated in clusters and servers and stuff like that. So that's very important. The other thing you, you may need to know if you're doing like senior desktop support will be SSCM. So you have to understand how SSCM works on the back end and on the front lines. So basically what I mean by that is if you have SSCM configured correctly in a work environment, Typically, you go in and type the, the username of the person on Active Directory. You got to find the username. You go in there. You grab the name. You put it on the SSEM console. Their, their name pops up with the computer that they're assigned to. You have to know how to un unassign, assign VMs, or unassign unsigned computers from SSEM itself. You can also right-click on the VM uh, on SSEM, and you can actually remote into the user's machine. So that's typically how we do it in my environment. And that's extremely important. And also you could you can make changes. You could deploy applications. You could throw in software, install software. And then in this environment, depending on how you're set up, um, we use Software Center. So Software Center allows the user to actually open up their own applications or open up their, their Software Center or make, think of it as a control panel, right? So you have a control panel. Each individual user has their own control panel and that's in Software Center. Basically, it allows you to uninstall reinstall an app so like you only have to call it so you may have like teams that you want to uninstall reinstall teams you can do that some applications don't show up because we have to allow it on the back end so we may have to go into ad and add you to a certain group for that application to show up because in my environment everything's set up with security groups right that's the same thing with okta so if you if you want a certain application and you want to log in and see that on your on, on the i guess on the home screen when you log in on okta since everything's sso you would, you would be added to a specific group. Once you get added to that group, then you have access to that specific thing that you want access to. Whether it's Workday, Concur, um, I guess um, any application that we use, it doesn't matter what it is, but you need to be set up correctly for that to work. So that's what I do. I do with SSCM, VMware, Active Directory, Office 365. So I do make changes on OneDrive. So if someone needs access to a certain drive, we will give them access to it. I also do modifications of groups. I also um, have these reports that we run uh, through Rapid7. So I run I run reports on Rapid7. If you're not familiar with that application or that tool, that allows you to scan and look at vulnerabilities of a computer. So some of these things could be like there are someone's added as a local admin. Like why is he a local admin like that, right? Or something like um, why are they part of certain configurations on? Um, I guess group policy editor, why are they added to certain things in group policy? Why are we allowing these things? So Rapid7 uh, runs a scan on that PC. It finds something that's not right, basically. And then it, give, it runs a report. It gives you the report. It gives you a score, right? So it's like out of 99%, 100, whatever, it gives you a score and it tells you it's not compliant. So it's not correctly set up or something's not right on that machine. So you have to remote into that machine and then it gives you recommendations or a remedy on how to fix that issue. Then you go in there, you make some changes on it, and then you're good to go after that. So that's something that I, I do on a daily basis. I run reports through Rapid7. Um, I run reports through Splunk. Uh, I run reports through, uh, I guess, VMware EXSI configuration. So you may run reports like some computers are not being allocated. Like you may have like uh, one user or one person is a software developer and they have two VMs for some odd reason. I don't know why they have two VMs. So I'm, I'm over here. I ping them on Teams and I'm like, why do you have two VMs? Like, this doesn't make any sense. 
And oh, I don't need that one anymore. So then what we do is we de we deallocate that VM from that user. We remove them from from that computer or that PC. Then after that, I uh, I just delete the whole VM. We don't we don't do anything, but we just delete the whole thing. So we delete the actual PC or desktop. And then that that saves us money because a lot of these VMs they, they, they cost money, right? Because VMware is expensive, right? Then you have licenses assigned to that PC. You're running Rapid Seven. You're running all these applications in the back end. So then you save money that way. So that's something that that I deal with. And then obviously I deal with the the, the simple level one stuff, where it's like a video room, a conference room. So I may be called to to join a room to set up a video conferencing room. I may be I may be called to um. Maybe log in a call for someone, or log in a Zoom call for someone, and I need to have the host key. So I'm an admin on I'm the I'm an admin on on Zoom. So I go in there on the back end, grab the host key, or they may want a a Excel sheet of who joined the meeting or who was in the meeting. So I can actually you could go on Zoom and you can actually do that on the back end as an admin. You could run a, an Excel report and then give that report to to the person that ran the, the meeting, and it tells you who was in the meeting, who wasn't in the meeting. And also we we do a lot of uh, um like um, video video conferencing uh, systems where basically they may have to share the screen. They may not have to share the screen. They may have to, they may need help with, with certain people that are dialing in, dialing out and stuff like that. So also I deal with Citrix as well. So a lot of people that, 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 that know what a Citrix environment is, basically you log into a website, uh, you click on your desktop and you're good to go after that. But you need to have Citrix workspace installed on your PC and then we set it up. We we help you log in and everything. So we we do a little bit of everything. It's like Active Directory, Office three sixty five, Citrix, VMware, SSCM, um, uh, doing patches and updates on PCs. It it, it really varies from from what we're doing. Um, I have access to Cisco Call Manager, so I assign I unassign phone numbers. I set up Cisco Jabber on the back end. So if you want if you want to make phone calls on your phone, you can. I set that up on the back end. I also set up VPN phones or VoIP phones as well. So like if you want a a, a Cisco phone, we send you one. You could go ahead and use that at home, just connect to your Wi-Fi. We deal with that as well. Um I also deal with Symphony, I deal with Bloomberg Terminal, Bloomberg Technology. Uh anything to do with Bloomberg, we deal with that as well. So it's a little bit of everything, pretty much. Um that's what I'm doing right now. So I do senior desktop support. Um, nothing, nothing crazy. Um, for anyone that wants to get into this, like I said, you you may want you need may want to look at SSCM, look at VMware, uh, look at Citrix, um, build a home lab and learn these skills, right? And add it on the resume. So it's very important that you know how to do that. I get obviously uh, Okta, multi-factor authentication, how these things are set up on the back end, they set up, you know, adding people to security groups and stuff like that. So that's pretty much me in a nutshell. I do a little bit of everything, not a lot, but that's pretty much me. Uh, obviously, we have our ticketing system service now, and we ha we handle tickets in the queue. We have a Confluence page in case somebody needs help with an article or needs me to write up an article. We do that as well, and a bunch of other things and new hires and terminations. So um, that's pretty much it for me. Um, with that being said, I hope you guys have a good day um, and take care. Bye.